Hi, and welcome to another episode of Explain That Shot. My name's Mick, you probably know me better as The Fourth Focus, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about this close-up shot of Abby from The Last of Us Part 2. So this shot was actually from the original release and not from the recent remaster, but it's still one that I often use when explaining to people just what a photo mode can do. The location was a very drab and uninspiring room. It had boarded up windows and a kind of dull brown lighting that really didn't invite a shot at all. But in the end, that made it all the more compelling as an example of what the game looks like versus what the final shot can end up being. Remember that the original version of The Last of Us Part 2 doesn't include Naughty Dog's three-point lighting setup, and the in-game light is all you've got to work with. The one thing that this room had was that slit of light coming through the boards in the window. Anyone who has tried the photo mode in any of The Last of Us games will probably know that you can't normally get the camera this close. Even at the shortest distance and at the narrowest field of view, you really can't get anything other than a regular portrait composition. The trick here then was to use camera collision and take advantage of the fact that the photo mode camera will bump and deflect around solid objects like walls, tables, fridges, whatever. By standing Abby right up against the window, and bringing the photo mode camera around in front of her, it deflects off the wall to give you this great view of the wonderful details. The one thing I was left to deal with then was the dreary and boring colours of the room. I actually think that black and white helps to simplify the shot and draw your attention more into the detail of those eyes. So this was always the way I wanted to go rather than a different colour. Of course, when you are doing a detail shot like this, it's absolutely crucial that you get your point of focus spot on. You certainly don't want the attention to be drawn to a blurry part of the image. So that's it really, and it's actually been interesting looking back now, and I think if I was to have come across this in the remaster, I probably wouldn't have taken this shot. Simply by having all the extra options, like the three-point lighting, I'd have ended up taking something that made use of those, but that would definitely have been less interesting. So it just goes to show that sometimes less can be more.